Welcome to lesson 32 in Hydraulics 102 and lesson 1 in the section on hydraulic cylinders. This is an intro lesson to get you started in learning about hydraulic cylinders, the most used hydraulic actuators. Now what are hydraulic cylinders? Hydraulic cylinders are hydrostatic motors that output linear movement. As we said, they are the most used hydraulic motors. They are also called linear motors, and that is because their work element, which is the piston rod and the piston, have a linear or oscillatory movement, because they go both outside the cylinder, they both extrude and retract back into the cylinder. Hydraulic cylinders are made to output large forces, and they basically work on Pascal's law principle which we talked about in Hydraulics 101, where the force exerted is equal to pressure times area. So this is the pressure that we bring to the front of the piston, and this area is actually the front of the piston, the area of the front of the piston, or the back of the piston if you have a double acting cylinder. Hydraulic cylinders are slow components, they move small speeds up to 0.5 meters per second, with special cylinders going up to 1 meter per second. Hydraulic cylinders are slower than pneumatic ones. There are various types of cylinders, which we will take a look at in the next lesson, and there are various classes of pressures that the various cylinders are built from, from 160 bars to 450 bars, and even higher than that. On this picture, on the right, we can see two large hydraulic cylinders that are sitting on a euro pallet for reference. So these are some powerful hydraulic cylinders. Okay, so this is a cutaway picture of a double acting, which means that we can bring the pressurized fluid on the both sides of the piston, and double rod, which means it has the piston rod on both sides of the piston. So double acting, double rod hydraulic cylinder. On number one, we have the spherical or ring rod end, which is used to connect the hydraulic cylinder to the work elements or tools or the places we need to exert the force from our cylinder. We can see the, both, both the covers here, which can be unscrewed in order to maintain the seals of the piston or maybe to treat the inner walls of the hydraulic cylinder. On number three, we can see the cylinder casing. On number four, we can see the most important part of our hydraulic cylinder, the piston. And on number five, we can see the piston rod that we have on both sides, making this a double rod hydraulic cylinder. And A and B are the work fluid ports through which we can bring the fluid in or get the fluid out of our work chambers. Now, it is very important that the hydraulic cylinders be mounted on their base and installed on the moving work elements in the right way. They should be mounted in a way that the cylinder is only exposed to axial loads, as you can see on this picture. So the forces with the green arrow are good, and this side force that can cause the bending load on our hydraulic cylinder is bad. We don't want our hydraulic cylinder to bend. Because errors while installing the cylinder and errors while choosing the rod and connector types, which we can see here, which are placed right here, can lead to unwanted bending loads on the cylinder. We will talk a little bit about these in one of the next lessons. If, if, if we don't choose the, the, the right rod and connector and we don't install it, that can lead to unwanted bending loads on the cylinder, which can cause the piston rod to deform it can cause asymmetrical wear and tear on the piston seals, which is not good, because they are responsible for keeping the work fluid where the work fluid should be, the pressurized work fluid. So if, if, we, if we damage the seals, our efficiency factor is going to be really, really low. And sometimes those bending loads can cause irreversible damage to the hydraulic cylinder. So remember, only axial loads for these bad boys. There is a certain tolerance for side loads that we will discuss later on. Now, there are various types of hydraulic cylinders depending on the work that has to be done by them. 
We have single acting hydraulic cylinders, which you can see in this symbol right here. And single acting meaning that we bring the pressurized fluid only on one side of the piston. So the piston rod and the piston have to go back to the initial position, we, we have to depend on an external force that's going to push it back. If we don't have an external force, we can install a single acting spring return hydraulic cylinder, which has a spring inside, which is loaded, and which brings back the piston and the piston rod in its initial position. Now we have double acting hydraulic cylinders, which have two ports, so we can bring the pressurized fluid on the back of the piston right here, and we can also bring it in the front of the piston right here. There are double acting double rod, which we saw in the fourth slide of this lesson, and there are many more, which we will talk about in the next lesson. In the middle here, we can see rotary cylinder actuators, which use the principle of the hydraulic cylinder, but they take the linear mechanical movement and they convert it into rotary motion. We are going to talk about all of these in the next lesson in much more detail. Now we call hydraulic cylinders the workhorses of our industry, just because there is so much work done by these chunky boys. Using Pascal's law that pressure is equal to force divided by area, we can manipulate hydraulic cylinders into giving us a lot of force on the output. You will often hear people calling them hydraulic rams, which are actually hydraulic cylinders that use a plunger instead of a piston. We will see that in the next lesson. They also call them hydraulic actuators, hydraulic cylinders, and linear hydraulic motors. Now, this is a picture of a large marine hydraulic cylinder. You can see these two engineers for reference, so the diameter of the piston inside this big hydraulic cylinder is probably close to one meter. So imagine that. Now imagine that area of the piston that has the diameter of one meter, so one meter diameter, and for example, we make a pressure of 200 bars in front of that piston, so we put 200 bars. Just for reference, this will result in a force of 15,000 kilonewtons, which is around 1,500 metric tons of force. This is it for the hydraulic cylinders introduction lesson. Thank you for listening and for staying focused, and see you in the next lesson in which we will learn about various different types of hydraulic cylinders.